and we can be able to get in terms of incomes uh, about four times higher incomes uh, of bamboo when compared to tobacco from the same acreage. Professor Kibuage, how did you get the idea to plan and implement a project on alternatives to tobacco growing? Uh, it was in 19, uh, I think, uh, late 1990s, I started reading about the issue of tobacco problems all over the world. And in 2005, I came across a call for proposals from the IDRC Canada on research on uh, alternative crops to tobacco. Then uh, that's when uh, I tried to search all forms of crops which can be able to sort out the problems associated with tobacco. Then I came across bamboo uh, and uh, when I looked at all the information about bamboo, I was convinced through research it can be able to sort out most of the problems associated with tobacco. And then you uh, handed in the plan for the project and IDRC approved it? Yeah, in 2005 we had a meeting of uh, about 60 uh, farmers and uh, various stakeholders involved in the tobacco or farming business in Kenya. We had this meeting, we looked at the key problems associated with uh, tobacco farming and then when we looked at all the problems, we had to come up with an action plan on how to deal with these problems by identifying alternative crops to tobacco. So we did a concept paper which was approved by IDRC, then we developed the whole proposal. And then we started working on bamboo as an alternative crop to tobacco in 2006 up to 2009. And then we had the phase two of the project uh, from towards the end of 2009 to end of this year 2012. That's when the project is ending and we hope we should be able to go to the next phase on the same. Mm -hmm. So it was also the idea of the tobacco growers themselves to do bamboo as an alternative? Uh, it was not their idea at all. Uh, but it is a vision which was shared with the farmers at that particular time. We showed them the potential of bamboo using uh, best practices of bamboo utilization and production from various countries, especially in the Asian countries like China, uh, Bangladesh, uh, and several others. And then that's when they, when they looked at how bamboo is being utilized in those countries, they accepted it as an alternative crop to tobacco. Oh, that's interesting. And now, what are up to now the results of the project? Uh, so far, we have made uh, a lot of progress in this project. One of the key results is that uh, bamboo can do very well in terms of growth and productivity in the same environmental conditions as those ones of tobacco. These ones I mean under the same soil conditions, climatic conditions, uh, and weather conditions, it can do very well. Uh, the second thing is that the productivity is very high and we can be able to get in terms of incomes uh, about four times higher incomes uh, of bamboo when compared to tobacco from the same acreage. But if these bamboo poles are processed at the community level, we are able to get up to 10 times higher in terms of profit from the same acreage. That is, if farmers are involved in making various products at the grassroots level, products like uh, uh, handcrafts, if they use it for housing, and uh, charcoal making, and several other uses at that level. And what about uh, the market for these products? Is there already a local or a regional market where you can sell bamboo products? 
our approach in this uh, project is uh, we look at the market in three levels. Uh, we wanted to give farmers an alternative crop that they can be able to make use of at the household level. Uh, currently, farmers are using the bamboo poles for construction of their houses. They are using the poles for fencing. They are using it for charcoal. They are using it for handcrafts. They are using it for furniture. They are also using it for environmental conservation, especially soil conservation and uh, we want to take them to a higher level of uh, these products now being sold to various markets in Kenya and uh, the market is quite huge because all the existing bamboo products in Kenya they are from Asian countries so this is the market we are targeting so that the farmers can be able to get more incomes. Mm -hmm. So, but if there are so many bamboo products from China, um, would local products be kind of cheaper so that they are competitive in the market? Uh, what we have seen from uh, our farmers who have been trained on making various products of bamboo is that there are specific products that our farmers have better skills than even the Chinese people especially some handcrafts. Uh, Kenyans are known for making the best handcrafts all over the world. And uh, we expect our products to compete very well with those ones of China. Uh, so we expect them to earn better incomes uh, than before. And as I learned, um, um, the bamboo farmers are now um, organized in cooperatives. What do you expect for the cooperatives to be? Will they grow or will there be more cooperatives? Uh, currently, our farmers are at 240, but the numbers are going up every day. They have organized themselves into four cooperatives. These are bamboo farmers cooperatives, registered and being supported by the government of Kenya. And uh, these cooperatives, we expect them over time to assist the farmers in marketing their products, especially when the project comes to an end at the end of this year. They should be able to sustain themselves in the future because cooperatives is a very strong movement in Kenya. And we talked about the future. What would be your wish for the future of the project? If it is the cycle is ended, will it? Would you like to continue? Now, where we are heading to is to focus more on policy and the change of certain regulations in Kenya uh, in two sectors: in the Tobacco Control Act of Kenya 2007. We look forward for certain amendments to expand on the article on alternative crops to tobacco, we expect the government to give more support to the farmers so that they can be able to switch from tobacco to alternative crops. So we would like to focus on policies uh, in that area so that we can have a very strong tobacco control program focusing more on alternative crops. The second area where we want to change policy is on uh, bamboo production sector in Kenya. We don't have a policy in this area, despite the fact that bamboo has a lot of potential changing the rural livelihoods of the people in Kenya. We would like to see the government coming up with a policy in this area so that our farmers can be able to benefit. The other thing is that uh, we don't have a market value chain for the bamboo sector. So we would like to see how a good policy will be used to develop this sector to benefit our farmers.